Well, the State of the Union's tonight, and you know we can expect at least a little bit of embarrassing buffoonery, for that is the era we live in. Didn't used to be that way. When I was a kid, the only thing you expected from the State of the Union was that it would interrupt must-see TV, and you'd have to watch a bunch of Krusty White's golf clap for an hour or so. Not the case anymore, mostly because of one faction in particular. Like, will anyone be at all surprised if later tonight Marge and Bobert get into a who-can-yell-the-loudest-dumb-thing competition, which culminates in them pulling each other's hair out as they roll down the aisleway inside one of those cartoon dust clouds? You wouldn't bat an eye. Meanwhile, George Santos is in the back like, you know my grandfather invented the cartoon dust cloud? Yeah, you might have heard of him, um, Walt Disney. Miss you every day, Pop Pop. Truly, these are absurd times, but the absurdity feels pretty one-sided to me, right? Like, you think it's bad now. Imagine they take power back, right? They get the White House back. We're just a couple years removed from the State of the Union being nothing but T-shirt cannons and hype sirens, right? The Vice President and Speaker of the House will be uh, replaced with a bald eagle wearing body armor and a drag queen in the stocks, and the whole thing will headline SummerSlam. That's what they'll do, right? But I just feel bad for Joe Biden because... There's no way to win with these people. No matter what he does, they're going to be mad. You know, I expect Biden to tout a list of his administration's accomplishments, the veracity of which will be utterly immaterial to the reciprocating rage it inspires on the right. You know, he'll get up there and talk about record job growth, and they'll just be like, but what about eggs? Fix eggs, right? He'll talk about the importance of education, and they'll be like, yeah, if you like books about slaves, Right? There's, there's nothing he can do. He could literally drag that Chinese balloon out there and hold it up and take pictures with it like it's a 10-point buck, and they'll just be like, well, you know, he almost didn't shoot it, right? Their outrage is unavoidable due to its fanciful nature, and that's the difference right there to me, because I'm sure they would say, oh, the left was plenty outraged during Trump's addresses. Sure, but for different reasons. We were upset because he gave the world's most racist carnival barker the Presidential Medal of Freedom, all right? Y'all are going to be upset because he didn't even mention how all the M&Ms are whores now. That shit ain't equitable, okay? A fact that I hope Biden spends at least a little bit of time on, reminding people that in this country, one side attempts to address actual issues with things like governance and policy, while the other side attempts to stoke made-up issues with things like ignorance and fear, probably because outside of killing Social Security, and making sure the rest of us have to work 60 hours a week until the day we die, they don't have much going on in the way of policy, all right? That's the state of shit right now, and the sooner people realize that, the better. Love y'all. Hoo-wee! What's up, YouTube? How you doing? Thank you for being here, fixing to put up them uh, bubbles and squares and whatnot. There should be another video there you can watch. There sure is a whole bunch of them. And also, there's a bubble for you to subscribe to the channel where I do these videos along with podcasts and other stuff. It's a fun time. But most importantly for me, the third bubble, that's my website where you can find my tour dates to come see me do stand-up comedy live because that's my real love and I would love for y'all to be there. If not, just keep showing up here. It means a whole hell of a lot to me. I'll keep doing them. You keep watching them. Love you like chicken. See you. Bye.